where are things at with your portfolio right now? Have you still been acquiring while living afar? Are you looking into different cities? What's going on with John's uh, portfolio? I mean, I couldn't be happier that I was able to um, get the house I wanted, live where I wanted, and build not even just your general environment, but your hour by hour or, and day to day environment. So I'm, I'm able to live a life that throughout the day works for me and allows me to manage the portfolio from afar. It really is about doing the work. Yes. When, and that might sound like a softball answer, but really one step at a time, do your tasks today, do tomorrow's tasks tomorrow, the next day, the next day. And it really, it, it's not hard. It's, it's relatively simple, but you just have to keep at it, right? What is up YouTube, Matt McKeever here. And in today's video, we catch up with John Kepler and discuss what's going on with his portfolio. So John's actually grown his portfolio now to over 108 units in Owen Sound. John's been on the channel a few times, but it's probably been about a year and a half now since we caught up. So I think this is just a great discussion. I know you guys are going to enjoy it. Smash the like button, hit subscribe, and let's jump into what's going on with John Kepler. What is up YouTube? Matt McKeever here and we've got John Kepler back on the channel. It's been a while, John. It has been a while. Well, I'm really excited to have John back. So I guess maybe to summarize for everyone that maybe they've joined in the last year on my YouTube channel, haven't seen some of your old videos. John, I really think of you and what we've experienced and displayed on the channel so far. You know, you're the distant landlord, right? So you're, con you're able to literally take yourself, you were investing in Owen Sound, moved, multiple hours away and kind of force that certain level of growth into your business and just management process and systems. And I think last time we touched base, you were around like 50, 60 units at the time. Yeah, around that when I made the move. And then so, you know, it's been, I guess, when was the move? So that was two years ago. Two years. Okay. So over the last, and we probably had you on maybe six months after that. So where are things at with your portfolio right now? Have you still been acquiring while living afar? Are you looking into different cities? What's going on with John's uh, portfolio? So uh, we've been continuing to acquire um, about, and well, we're not quite as big as, uh, not quite twice as big, but we're on the way. So uh, perhaps in another year or so, uh, I will be twice as big as I was when I made the move. Formerly, I was, uh, very much in favor of managing in place, you know, living, yeah. living right in the middle of uh, your portfolio and it kind of, you know, very hands on management. And then I flipped the switch and became someone who managed from afar. And it turns out that uh, it doesn't impede your growth. If anything, uh, I've been much more free to continue growing since I finally did move away. Yeah, well, and I guess that's something I'd love to explore with you because before you moved, you were very hands-on. Like your tenants knew you, they'd see you walking down the street, you could wave to them, all that sort of stuff. And, uh, you know, I don't want to put words into your mouth or try and mind read, but I imagine making that shift before COVID is probably a lot nicer than trying to make that shift during COVID, like trying to decouple yourself from the operation. So, one, you know, share your thoughts, and then two, were there any challenges from managing from afar and the COVID environment? Well, as it turns out, with, with hindsight now on our side, this was unbelievably well-timed. <laughs> Who knew? I don't think any of us planned for the world to become this different this quickly, mm -hmm. even if some of the, the theories about the world at large ended up being more or less true. I think maybe we had some long-term thoughts about where things are going that all became true in an instant. Yeah. So I, I mean, I couldn't be happier that I was able to um, get the house I wanted, live where I wanted, and build not even just your general environment, but your hour by hour or and day to day environment. So I'm, I'm able to live a life that throughout the day works for me and allows me to manage the portfolio from afar. Um, certain distractions and stressors are at bay and there's some distance between us and those, uh, those issues. And it turns out with COVID, it's twice as important. Yeah. And so if I remember correctly, at the time that you moved away, I think you had one full-time kind of handyman or kind of general property manager. Is that still the same structure or how's that changed? Yeah, so um, our team has grown. So we have a couple of contracting teams now. And um, I think I mentioned last time, uh, we have a star leasing agent who rema right, remains yeah. our star leasing agent. He does a lot of, a lot of things, you know, it's, um, he does a lot more than that. He's, uh, he's extremely valuable. Um, but, uh, we have expanded the size of our team and continue to kind of balance the workload and allow people to focus on their strengths. You know, some people, um, do more on the administrative side. Some people do, do more of the hammer swinging and more of the contracting work. 
It's been challenging with physical distancing and everything from, uh, well, I mean, leasing, you can't, you can't do the uh, open houses with leasing that we used to. Mm -hmm. So um, leasing still takes place. It still is reasonably smooth, but certain things such as repairing units and uh, especially repairing units where there are families or many people living in place or someone who thinks they might have recently been in contact with someone who has COVID so then they can't get the repair until they isolate, mm -hmm. little things like that. So, I mean, it hasn't been perfect, I, but I think that we've had to make the changes and adjustments that everybody has. And I, I'm, I'm proud of the work we've done. I think that we've managed to roll with the punches a lot better than most. Mm -hmm. And so do you mind sharing, because I'm sure the audience would be curious, we're talking just over 100 units now. What does that org chart kind of look like and what's your day to day? Are you doing like a daily huddle with the team as a once a week call? Uh, so I try to avoid using the phone. Uh, I am always available by phone for, uh, for some select people. So. Um, our team has my number. They can use it whenever they need to uh, for something that warrants it. But it's really not that many calls, mostly texts. We also have our software. It's, it's not um, specific property management software, but our organizational software. And so we have all our projects and, and teams in that software, and we can comment and upload photos as necessary and set deadlines and timelines. So it is kind of a mix, but it is, on the other hand, all through a cell phone. Gotcha. Nice. And so is that one like leasing agent, property manager? Is there like a bookkeeper? You know, how many, I guess, different roles or titles do you kind of see as being, um, whether it's part of your business or maybe just a generic setup for a hundred unit management? Yeah, it, it's tough to say what the formula is for a, a, for a portfolio our size. I have heard in the past that uh, some people like to have one full-time employee for every 40 units. That hasn't precisely been our experience. Also, we, every single team member we have is passionate and uh, basically is very good at their job and it's important to me that they continue to not, not just do good work but be happy about the work they're doing. Mm -hmm. And so there has been a certain amount of flexibility um, in terms of what tasks our team members can select. I think bookkeeping might be one where at different times there have been at least three of us who've kind of taken on the bookkeeping. Yeah. yeah, so one person was on it quite a bit and then they did a little bit less of it and sometimes it's me, I do a lot of it and other times I get a little burnt out with it and I pass it on. At some point, I think the goal, I think the goal of anyone else in our position would be to just kind of pass it off and hire a full-time bookkeeper and just have one person. But then you're still vulnerable if you only have the one person who knows everything. So some of these, some of these things are uh, less than precisely defined. Yeah. And maybe we say, oh, you know, this is a negative or this is uh, uh, not as clean as it could be. But I think it's just a natural part of growth. So. Mm -hmm. Bookkeeping, bookkeeping in particular, we're passing around and it's, it's not quite cut and dry, but uh, it, you know, we're not big enough to have an HR department either, so it, yeah. it is what it is. Gotcha. And then so as far as your day-to-day, -day, is most of that spent acquisitions? Are you spending time outside of real estate? How would you say you allocate like John's time? Well, whenever I focus on a task, I try to get through it quickly. So if, as long as you time block and limit the, the amount of energy and effort that you put into any one thing, you can get through quite a checklist as long as it's you know, two minutes here, five minutes there. Don't, don't let this other thing become 45 minutes because then I'll need quite a break afterwards. And so I basically do what I can to move through the task quickly, again, on my phone, on my computer. Um, if it's something that I can't really, I, I know I'm, I'm speaking vaguely here, but if it's something I can't immediately get movement on or I can't solve it today, I'll bookmark it for later or or send it out to one of our team members and say, hey, can you follow up on this tomorrow? And then I know that that task freezes for the day and there will be progress tomorrow. Gotcha. So, so that sort of thing. And so um, you've been actively acquiring during COVID. I guess want to touch upon, have you changed the way you approach that? You know, um, buying properties, are you submitting offers before doing viewing, still just doing the viewing process normal? Any changes to your operations? So my single favorite change has been that my lawyer can do signings over Zoom. Yes, that's so huge. I, I always wanted this. I've wanted mm -hmm. this for years, and, and only now is it coming, coming true. We got one good thing from COVID, at least. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they're always, 
they're the only people you know who still use fax machines. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the, and, and I love, uh, or of course I love our lawyers, I love our legal team, but you know, um, there's only so much progress that, uh, that the, the legal sector as a whole can have, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's, this has moved them along. So I've been able to sign and close deals at my dining room table, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, in terms of looking at buildings and doing due diligence, I, frankly, I think it depends on what the government's thoughts are uh, week to week. Um, in the last year, uh, I have walked physical property. So there was, I, I truly don't remember what month it was, but mm -hmm. at one point there was a lull and it seemed permissible. Yeah. Um, no one really objected. Uh, there were some tenants in relatively close proximity, still more than six feet, but there were people around, people in the building, and everybody seemed comfortable at that time and we were able to complete it. Otherwise, uh, for appraisals especially, we rely on a lot of photos. Mm -hmm. So someone will uh, go in and take photos when no one else is around and we ensure that people you know, don't have interaction. Yeah. Uh, we'll ensure that we don't bring bring all the people in together to look that, that used to come in. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, I've always um, been a little light on my, my physical inspections. I, I know that some people like to dive deep and they'll look at every single thing in the basement. Um, I know my market very well. Mm -hmm. Some of the properties we're buying are properties that I've driven by for 15 years. I've always kind of been aware of the property and then, and then it comes up. So uh, I'm generally aware, though I understand that if I fail to inspect something that, you know, there might be a furnace we didn't look at closely enough and now we have to replace it. Um, there are also a few particular real estate hazards that I don't think are overly prevalent in my market. So I also feel... Yeah. I also feel a little safer that way. Some people are worried that the next property is always going to have structural damage. I don't need to worry about that, um, just based on my knowledge of the town. And some people worry that every building is going to be cockroach infested. Um, our investment market as a whole doesn't really have that yeah. issue either. So it, fortunately, we're able to make it work and, and it's not too much of a due diligence headache even during COVID. Gotcha. And so most of the properties you've acquired, were those on market deals, off market deals, a split? So, so I'd have to reevaluate, but the last time I was asked that question, I said about 50-50. Mm -hmm. I don't think a lot has changed. Um, uh, the most recent one is off market. Um, sometimes it's on market, but uh, at the same time, I think it, even in, in very recent months, uh, in the spring, mm -hmm. there's been more and more pressure on market. So I think um, we've always been 50-50, but now I think we're going to be going more off market than we used to because it's just harder and harder, especially on smaller buildings where there are more bidders. Mm -hmm. And so you're kind of in an interesting niche because you're in a smaller town uh, or sorry, larger town, small city, Owen Sound. Do you find that with your approach to getting private deals, is it just your network? Is it just people knowing you as the landlord? Are you proactively taking strategies to try and find these deals? So I've, I've answered that question in years past and my old answer is that it's a variety of things. Uh, maybe you meet someone at a party and a year or two later they want to sell. One of our good deals, uh, one of our best deals, was done through, uh, not through or via a financial planner, but there was a financial planner who was friends with a bunch of people and he got us all in touch with each other and okay. got the ball rolling. Um, but my, th that's my old answer. Mm. My new recent answer is that we used to be fairly heavily into property management and it's a thankless job. Uh, yes. You don't get paid nearly as much as you do when you own the underlying asset. And so we've been acquiring properties that we manage. So okay. um, get into a building, start managing it, uh, deal with the associated headaches, ask yourself why you did it in the first place, and then buy the building. Gotcha. And so for someone that's maybe thinking of getting into real estate and they need a day job first, do you think is that a viable approach? Like go work for a property management company, do that for a period of time, learn about real estate and then potentially use that to leverage or pivot in? Because I know, for example, like Corey McKinnon, he's done that as well, where he managed a bunch of properties and then he slowly kind of um, stopped managing them. and was like, you know, I can either keep managing it and become an owner or I'll stop managing it. And just wondered your thoughts. Well. Everybody wants a good property manager, and good managers are hard to find. Mm -hmm. Frankly, I think if you are through whatever means necessary, able to uh, almost convince yourself or uh, to be a good manager, to decide that it is worthwhile for you to develop the skills and use the tools to become a good manager, then you're going to be invaluable to people. Mm -hmm. So I think 
at one point in time, I wondered why I was doing it because it wasn't a lot of yeah. money and it was a lot of headaches. And then it became apparent for me, right? So I think if you're able to maintain your enthusiasm while you have a job, do some management yourself. Uh, you mentioned as part of a, a larger property management company, I think you might want to go out on your own and endear, yourselves, endear yourself to the owner. Mm -hmm. But once you go out and get a bit of a property management track record, I think it opens uh, a lot of doors, more than I anticipated that it would. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. Because I think oftentimes people immediately go to realtor, right? Like when they think, I want to get into real estate, but I don't have any money, they always go realtor. But I think there are other options out there, paralegal, becoming a property manager, a home inspector, mortgage agent. So again, I think there's a lot of different ways. If you want to break into real estate, you can. It's just a matter of figuring out what's the right approach for you in that situation. I think more than the, the other examples and other types of real estate, related or real estate adjacent mm -hmm. careers you mentioned. It really is about doing the work. Yes. When, and that might sound like a softball answer, but really one step at a time, do your task today, do tomorrow's task tomorrow, the next day, the next day. And it really, it, it's not hard. It's, it's relatively simple, but you just have to keep at it, right? Mm -hmm. um, different than other, maybe a sales position where maybe you talk to a ton of leads and don't make any sales and then you, you wonder yeah. if you wonder if you're getting paid for your efforts. Property management is extraordinarily based on your efforts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I appreciate that. And so one last question, John, Owen Sound real estate market. Have you seen a lot of people coming from outside of town into uh, investing in Owen Sound? Do you think that you'll if that is the case, do you think you'll continue to see pressure from outside investors and just any long term thoughts or opinions on the market? Well, I think that what we have seen was unavoidable. Um, there's been, like, like elsewhere in Ontario, everywhere yeah. in Ontario, there's been uh, so much more activity than there used to be. Single family is through the roof. That's maybe a separate discussion. But mm -hmm. even multifamily, everybody's looking for good investments. I've, I've heard, just in passing, I've heard people from the GTA mutter things like, where are you going to find a good five cap? Yeah. I thought, really? <laughs> really? A five cap is too much to ask for? Well, uh, I think that anybody at all out there with some money who has exhibited that, that opinion has subsequently gone outside of the GTA and found a market such as Owen Sound where they can continue to live their dream and hit their numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's been happening. So um, I think all across the board, again, single family, of course, is crazy for owner occupants, but yeah. a small multifamily and even mid-size, not necessarily the huge, huge multifamily, but mid-size right now, there are investors with a few million dollars who are finding that, uh, that they like Owen Sound a lot better than maybe they like Hamilton. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I appreciate that insight. And so I guess with potentially more competition or pressure, has that forced you to change your definition of a deal or are you just pickier now? Like as in you, there's less deals. I mean, it's, it's tough to say because, I mean, it, I guess in terms of your bidding on property, it's competition and pressure, but every, uh, every bump up in price, every bump up in demand is positively affecting what we've already got. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I suppose that buying uh, new property is getting harder. The margins are getting uh, thinner than they used to be, but then everything we've got is being further enabled and made more profitable by that action. So mm -hmm. I, I, th I've, I think about that a lot actually in terms of what that graph is gonna look like longer term. Yeah. If every deal is harder than the last deal, but then every new deal encourages further profitability on your old deals, it's, uh, it's a good cycle. I mean, it's, it's, it's a positive overall, even mm -hmm. if yes, month to month is a little harder to negotiate and, and buy properties than it used to be. Awesome. Yeah, really appreciate it, John. So if people want to follow along with you on your journey, what's the best way to do so? Uh, I always suggest Instagram. It's, uh, well, I guess we'll put it in the description below. Um, but uh, I have an Instagram account that hasn't quite blown up yet, so I am still able to respond to direct messages if people message me. And that's probably the best place. Awesome. Well, appreciate it, John. Thank you. Thanks again to John for taking the time to shoot that video. If you guys got value from that video, smash the like button, hit subscribe if you're new to my channel. As well, in the video description down below, we're going to include a bunch of different links to previous videos with John if you want to kind of get fully filled in on uh, John's backstory, some of his approaches to real estate investing, and how he's been able to build up his portfolio up to 108 units. Uh, click the link in the video description down below, and we'll see you in the next video.